Hey friends, it's Joe Carroll. Thanks for tuning in, despite seeing this face on the uh, the thumbnail there. I'm honored today to be able to present a new piece of software from my friends at Plugin Alliance and Neold. And if you look at the screen here, this is the U17. You know, those guys over there, uh, <laughs> I don't know what's in the drinking water, but they come up with the most unique things, you know, that that you can think of. And what they found this time is they've uh, uncovered this circuit. There was only a couple dozen made in 1954 in the broadcast for the broadcast industry over in Germany, and it was a you know it was a it was a really unique compressor because while at its core it was solid state diode bridge, it was also uh, had you know tube amplification. So they've taken you know the 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 roots of that circuit. And applied some unique features like, uh, you know, clipping. Yeah, not just any clipping, though, like overdriving a tube. And you look at the screen and you'll see we, we, ca- we can kind of break it down into sections. So what they did, you know, in addition to at its core being the, the you know, the vintage compressor, they've, they've put some new features and some, uh, some things into it that um, the original didn't have and that make it more useful to what we do now. We'll look at this section right here. And this is our clipper. So before we get into compression, we can go into clipping. Basically, it's not just clipping. It's, this isn't digital clipping. This is simulating overdriving a tube, an ECC81 tube to be exact. And so it sounds, it sounds really cool. It can be very useful. So if we want more clipping, we just turn this guy clockwise. And to, and to, we get to the point where it turns into uh, you know, kind of a... Um, a fun like distortion kind of thing. I, I've I've been playing with it and d- d- you know made some crazy uh, like bass drum sounds using that you know that clipper as a distortion tool. And the emphasis knob right here, basically we're 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 ter- we're giving it the frequency range that we want to clip. So from from uh, right here, you know, low frequencies all the way up as we go clockwise, we're we're centering that clipping around higher frequencies. So we can kind of tailor the the, the breakup, um, if you will, um, to where we want it to be. Okay, so the input knob here. Okay, we're not actually adjusting our volume. Kind of think of it as a threshold. You know, as we want more and more compression, we're turning it up into the circuit. Okay, that's how that operates. Now, right above that, and this is a really cool feature, is our detector, and and we can link. You know, on a stereo application, we can have it fully linked, fully unlinked, or anywhere in between. Uh, which is a it, it, that's a very cool feature. If you've not played with a, any compressor that has that in the stereo field, you know the the ability to um, select different ranges between fully linked and unlinked. It's a it's a it's a great uh, great feature. And after that, we have our um, attack. You know, tr- more traditional attack and release settings that we're used to, and we can go all the way up. You know, to something as fast as a half a millisecond, which is crazy lightning fast, all the way to uh, count, you know clockwise, and we get into the the auto uh, feature here, uh, auto attack time. Um, the release, the same thing. We can go all the way up from fifty milliseconds, which is is pretty fast. You know, if we want to get really explosive drum rooms, you know, maybe we're in the middle, somewhere in between fifty and a hundred. Uh, but if we want uh, a creamy vocal or something like that, maybe we're you know we're going on up in here to a half second, a, a second, two seconds, three seconds, whatever the case may be. All right. So after that, we have our torque, and that's a really cool, really cool knob because that we're we're combining our knee and our ratio into one knob. So at it, you know, if we're going to accurately model the original, it, it, that's its default setting at 20% here. But we can get really, really soft, a very, very soft knee, very low ratio compression. So we can, you know, pull the sound of the tubes out of this circuit, but but get very little um, compression. Or, you know, we, we can, we can uh, you know, drive the input really high and get several dB of compression to pull the tone out of the unit, but um, we're not reducing that dynamic range all that lo- you know uh, all that much, which is a great mixing tool for me. I love that feature on uh, pianos, acoustic guitars, things like that. All right, so after that, we get into the side chain section. That's right here, and it, it, what what's really cool? They've taken our side chain. It's it it. It's great that we have one, right? We're, but we're getting used to that, you know, saying, hey, we don't want, you know, anything below 60 cycles or 100 cycles to trigger our compressor. And, and that's great. But they've taken it to a whole new level here. We can use this little green button right here, and, and we can monitor what the sidechain is hearing. 
so we can hear with our ears and focus exactly where we want the compression to be centered. So, you know, if it's an acoustic guitar that's really um, got a, a, a picky attack thing that is just driving us nuts, we can dial that in, you know, and that's what's going to trigger the compressor. And, and uh, you know, you can imagine uh, how useful that could be. All right, so on the, um, the two knobs here, frequency and shape, it's kind of a, it operates as a tilt EQ, uh, essentially. So we're, we're giving, we can tell, tell it where we want our tilt to be centered around frequency wise. We go from 12 K all the way down to 80 and anywhere in between. And the slope is, is the tilt. All right. So that is, uh, we're adjusting our low pass and high pass filters and moving them up and down. So that's a really, really cool thing to be able to, um, hear precisely what is going to trigger the compression circuit. And then lastly, right here, we have our dry, wet mix knob, which is a really, really cool feature. I, I have become a, I'm a really big fan of, you know, getting kind of aggressive with my compression, but then just dialing that back, you know. And I think most of us have, and I think that's a, it's a really wise thing to, to have built that in there. And then finally, we have our output makeup gain knob right here. All right, I have the multi-tracks for a session that I did for an artist named Missy. Uh, this is called Mr. Mysterious Missy. Thanks for allowing us to use your song here. And all you guys should go follow her on Instagram and stream her music, by the way. I've got the multi-tracks pulled up. And if you look at the screen right here down here on the right, I have my multi-bus method going on. Maybe watch some other videos I've done for Plugin Alliance where I talk about how I use... Um, virtual preamps and compression and EQ across multi, you know subgroups. And so what we're going I thought it would be a fun way to just, you know, just solo up the drum bus, the you know the the drum group and bring up Neold and um listen to the U17 in action on the drum set. So let's hear it without any compression whatsoever so you know what you're hearing. All right, it's great, but I'm definitely missing the energy that the uh, compression that I had on there for the mix was, uh, was providing. So one of my favorite ways to learn about a new product like this, which has so many, you know, new features is literally the guys at Neil put a lot of thought and effort into developing, look at that, there's 70 presets for us. They really did their homework and put together a great preset package for us, which when you're trying to learn something new like this that has, you know, features and things built into it that maybe we haven't had this kind of an option for, it, it's fun to see where they put the knobs, right? How they were using the side chain, how they were using the clipper, you know, in, in their mind. And it goes a long way into teaching us how to use the software. So when I, when, you know, when I first got this, this that's what I started doing. And, and it was really fun. So I'm going to pull up the drums here. And we're going to go to... Um, let's just drag, let's, let's number one, aggressive. Okay. Let's hear, uh, like I'll let it play for a bar in bypass and then I'll engage it and see what, uh, the, the, uh, U17 is doing. All right, very cool. I, I like that a lot. And, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to really turn up the density here, and I'm going to show you how the clipper is 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 going to work. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm going to overdo it, but I want you to hear what it's doing and how, as I adjust the emphasis knob, that the you know where the clipping is being focused is 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 changing. Oh, you hear that? As I went counterclockwise over to the low frequencies, the bass drum and the bass guitar started really breaking up and distorted because I'm, you know, I'm, I'm overdoing it. But that you can hear, you know, and, and, and just the opposite when I'm this way, it's the snare drum was being pushed down. So that, that's a, man, that's a fun tool. So let, let me recall that, that preset. You'll see that the, um, I'm getting quite a bit of, uh, of, you know, they've got really got the input turned up here. But the mix is, you know, half and half here almost. Um, so that's that's pretty cool. Let's pull up another one. Let's go, uh, what sounds fun here? Explosive sounds fun. Let's try that. Man, that's really uh, that's really pushing the the snare drum and the attack elements out front. I really really like that. 
Um, let's let's see how this side chain. I, I want to put it. I want to run signal through it. Put it in monitor mode so you can hear. You know how the side chain is working and what it's hearing to to um, apply the compression. So the low end is really, really driving the compressor on this uh, this preset here. Let's check out, what about smack? Let's hear what that guy's doing. Very cool. It's a, it's a great, as you can hear, it's a great sounding circuit. I'm really... Uh, really, really liking it. You can see they in this preset, they've got the uh, density turned up quite a bit. So we're definitely getting clipping and it's being focused into the upper mids here, which is uh, which is cool and interesting. So we got the slower attack. So we're letting that transient of the snare drum, the attack of the kick drum come through, but we're releasing ultra fast. So we're getting that, that, that uh, increase in sustain, which I'm really liking. Cool. Very, very smooth. All right. When we think of great compressors, obviously we think of vocals, right? Remember back in the hardware days, we had a couple really special tools. What did they get saved for? They got they got saved for vocals. So let's uh, let's hear this on Missy's vocal. Um, let's choose let, again. Let let's go through their presets and see what was in ooh vocal dominant. Let's hear that guy. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put it in bypass. Let uh, a couple bars pass just so we can hear the raw sound here. I've got uh, the effects turned off, and I have, you know, the other compressors and things that I used in the mix um, in, in bypass. So this is just a kind of a raw vocal, and then we'll go into vocal dominant. That sounds fun. Mr. Mysterious, I should have kept a clear distance. Now we're face to face. I never learned my lesson, and you taste so sweet just like a... Okay, that's very cool. I like that a lot. That's a, that's a really useful patch. I need to flag that guy. All right, so let's look at what they were doing. So clipping, we can see, uh, really wasn't much of a thing. We're, we're, we're passing you know, most of the signal unaffected to the compressor, but we're, we're really jacking the input up and we have a, well, I guess that's why they call it dominant. We're using a hard knee and a high ratio here. And a, look, fast attack, fast release, like 120 milliseconds. Oh, okay. So interesting. Uh, the mix knob is half and half right here. We're at the 43. So, so that's, we're seeing the metering be super aggressive, but we're only hearing about half of that. Okay. So let's hear that one more time. Cause man, I like that. Mr. Mysterious, I should have kept a clear distance. Now we're face to face. I never learned my lesson. Very cool. All right. So now let's go for something smooth. Let's do, uh, Ooh, mellow. Why not? Let's hear mellow. Mr. Mysterious, I should have kept a clear distance. Now we're face to face. I never learned my lesson. And you taste so sweet, just like a peach to me. And baby, you are a dream. Let me just move a little closer. I'm a Mr. Mysterious, I should have kept a clear distance. Now we're face to face. I never learned my. Very, very cool. Let's slow that release down, make it really, really smooth. Mr. Mysterious, I should have kept a clear distance. Now we're face to face. I never learned my lesson. And you taste so sweet, just like a peach to me. And baby, you are a dream. Okay, that's really locking her down. The slower release is making it a little more creamy, not quite as in your face and aggressive as the other preset was. But nonetheless, I love the tone. I, I love what it's doing. Okay, this song was written around an acoustic guitar part that she came up with, which uh, she intended to be played on electric. And so, you know, that's a very dominant driving part of the choruses. So let's uh, let's solo that up, and I want you to hear it. And I've got Neil on, but uh, I'll have it in bypass, okay? All right, very cool part, but as you can hear that, that the the initial attack of, of that pattern is, is is jumping out, and we, and we need to level that off. We definitely need to level that off. So let's uh, let's see what Neold will do here. 
Um, we've got the ooh, electric drive. Let's see what that's doing. Uh, put it in bypass, unbypass it so we can hear. Uh, as we can see, we're really going to engage the clipper here, so it's probably going to add some, some grunge as well as control. Okay, so we're definitely getting some grunge. You can see how that would be, uh, you know, if a guitar is a little bit sterile, that we can use that clipper to, to, to get some extra mojo out of it. Uh, let's see what the other um, electric polish, let's see what that's going to do, all right? All right, definitely like it, but I, you know, can already tell when I unsolo this that I'm going to need a little more dynamic control than this. So let's turn that up almost like an old school variable uh, variable mu would have done, and really locked in something, you know, uh, hammer it like a like a Fairchild would have or something. There, there we go. Okay, so I'll put it in bypass, let you hear that guitar part in the track without any compression. Now, controlling the peak. So th that's allowing that part, you know, that's foundation to the song. I remember when I mixed it, she's like, Man, th this thing, this part has to be really up there with my vocal. And that's going to allow me to do it, you know, in the mix. All right, lastly, let's uh, let's hear this thing in action on the stereo bus, how it ties everything together. Um, sometimes, you know, um, a, a tube style compressor, um, is just the right, is the right magic. But, you know, a lot of the old tubes, a lot of, a lot of things, uh, I won't name any names, but, you know, we had very, uh, very few attack and release options. And sometimes despite the tone that we loved out, out of the tubes and the transformers and things, it, it just didn't work for the groove of the song. So what we can get here is we can get the attack time that we want, the release time that we want, plus the tone, that vintage tone that we want. So that's that that's um, you know one of the features I see really valuable. You know, valuable is the combination of of adjustable attack and release and detector and everything else, uh, along with that vintage tone that maybe you know we're really looking for. So let's pull up a um, preset. Let's do let's see. Let's just do medium here. And uh, yep, like I expected, low clipping rate, uh, very soft on the, the knee and the uh, ratio. Okay, very fast release. That's surprising. Uh, but no, no, I bet that sounds really, really good though. Um, and fairly, all right, you know what? Let's do this. Let's kind of use a setting that a lot of us engineers are going to be very familiar with. 30 milliseconds on the, on the attack, um, you know, because of other v VCA models that are so popular and 100 milliseconds on the release. That's going to be something that we all know, and we can tell what we're doing here um, is we're not letting the, um, the very low extreme uh, elements make our compressor pump too much. So, um, you know, the, the detector, I like this. Uh, there, it's leaning towards unlinked, but somewhat linked. Um, I, I, I think I'm really going to like this. Let's, uh, let's check it out. I'm going to take it out and uh, let a little track roll, then put it in, okay? Okay, I, immediately I like that. I want to turn the dry wet knob up, and I want to hear uh, for sure exactly what's going on with that attack and that release. I, I like that. So we're say we're not only saving our transients, but it's almost like you know we're enhancing them a little bit. A lot of times, another setting that we engineers use a lot is a ten millisecond, right? So let's hear that, and with our one hundred millisecond release, and we'll we'll keep everything else the same for now. Let's hear what that's doing. Okay, very cool. You hear what I'm hearing? We're getting the tone of the unit. That that that. I mean, it's just so rich, so warm. But um, I think I would also like to hear the the attack a little bit faster. There's some there's some very transient elements that are combining with the snare drum on certain hits here and there. That I think we let's go up to around 
five or six on the milliseconds, all right? All right, very cool. So we're getting the sound of the unit, but with the flexibility that we're used to with a lot of more modern tools. So guys, this is a winner. Uh, guys over at Neil, thanks so much for giving us, you know, these kind of tools. Big Al, something I use a lot, you know, the V76. So so many great tools. Um, and this is just another one to put in, into the arsenal. Uh, you Mega Bundle users, remember, th this is free. You've already got this guy. If you're not a Mega Bundle user, why? Why are you not? Uh, you know, I, I look so forward to every time they release a new product, uh, to just adding it, you know, playing with it and, and seeing where it fits my, you know, my own work. And this is, this is another one. All right, guys. Happy mixing.